Rejoice, football video game players. Competition has finally returned to the football console gaming market. The glory days of NFL 2K5 are back. Woohoo! And not so fast, Hotshot. The very first and perhaps most important thing to say about the indie football games on the market in 2019 is that they are, well, indie games. They are made by very small teams with very small budgets having very few resources. You have to temper your expectations going into these games. If you go in expecting a level of complexity and completeness on par with a game like Madden, then you will be setting yourself up for disappointment and also unfairly setting up these games for failure. That being said, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you in this critique, and I'm not going to sugarcoat my criticisms. Neither of these games is particularly good yet. And in fact, I'm actually kind of disappointed with the lack of improvement and progress between last year, 2018, and this year, 2019. While both games have made decent strides in their respective franchise and dynasty modes, the lack of improvements to the core on-field gameplay is a severe letdown for me. That disappointment is exacerbated by the fact that both Canuck Play and Axis Games decided to increase the price of their games from $20 or less to $30 each. This kind of pulls both games out of that bargain bin price point and up into a more mid-tier or double-A price point alongside games like Lords of the Fallen, Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, and City Skylines. And to be frank, I personally just do not feel that either game improved in quality enough to warrant a 50% jump in price. Axis is perhaps a bit closer to warranting its increased price. Axis 18 was already the more feature complete game last year, and Axis 19 is still, in my opinion at least, the better game overall this year. However, I do concede that Maximum Football 19 might be the most improved of the two games over its 2018 counterpart. This basically comes down to the fact that Axis 18 already had a fully functional franchise mode and 2019 simply extended that franchise mode. Maximum Football 18, on the other hand, did not have a multi-season franchise, dynasty, or career mode of any kind. A college dynasty mode complete with an in-season recruiting mechanic inspired by NCAA Football 13 was added for Maximum Football 19 and is a huge improvement to the game and adds substantial potential replay value not to mention filling a football video gaming niche that has been vacant for five years now. If I wanted to summarize the state of both of these games this year, I think that the summary that I gave in the conclusion of my Axis Football 18 review last year would still apply. Maximum Football 2019 feels like a bad PlayStation 2 era college football game, and Axis Football 2019 feels like a very good PlayStation 1 era football game, so take that however you will. Each of these two games has strengths and weaknesses when compared to the other, so I wouldn't say that either is strictly superior to the other. If you can afford to buy both, then I hope you will buy both. Supporting both of these companies and fostering friendly competition between them is probably the best way to see these products improve. The sad fact is that the price increase may price some players out of being able to afford both, especially if you already blew $60 on Madden 20, or, gods forbid, $100 or more, and you were only able to get, like, $5 back by reselling it to GameStop. If you don't own either Axis 18 or Maximum 18, then, personally, my money would go to Axis Football 19 for being the better game overall. However, if you owned and played both of last year's games, and you can only buy one of this year's games, then I would maybe recommend that you give Maximum Football 2019 a chance on the grounds that Maximum Football 2019 actually does feel like a new game this year compared to last year. I'm going to spend the next two or maybe three videos comparing and contrasting Maximum Football 2019 and Axis Football 2019. I'll be talking about what each game does well, what each game does poorly, and also offering my own suggestions for how each of these games can be improved, and what they can learn from other football games and from each other. While I would like to be able to stay positive, I also feel like I have to be honest and forthcoming about the quality of these games. I'm going to try to avoid directly comparing either game to modern Madden titles, because as I said at the top of the video, that comparison is simply not fair. 
but a few references to Madden, NCAA football, 2K football, and maybe even Backbreaker will probably slip in from time to time. I've already written full reviews of both of these games on my personal blog at www.megabearsfan.net. I invite you to read those if you would like, because this video is not going to be a full review of both games. It's just going to be a compare and contrast video. If you enjoy this video, then I hope you'll consider supporting me on Patreon. With your support, I'll be able to continue to buy next year's crop of indie football games for review and analysis, and I can continue to create more videos like this. Patron support has already allowed me to purchase used copies of older Madden and NCAA football titles for research purposes, since I did not have the foresight to keep those games at the time. Additionally, as I hit my goal levels, I intend to make matching contributions to a charity or nonprofit. When I hit a goal, I'll put up a poll on my Patreon page with several charities or nonprofits of my choosing and allow my patrons to choose which specific organizations to donate to, so that some of the money will go to a good cause. In fact, it's never been easier to put your voice out there. If you feel passionately about something, then I encourage you to create your own blog or your own YouTube channel. Make your voice heard. Perhaps someday, I'll become your patron. The strength of both of the indie football games in 2019 lies in their respective career modes. Maximum Football 2019 received most of the hype prior to its release due to its inclusion of a College Dynasty mode. So, I'll start there with that game. Since lawsuits brought the NCAA football games from EA to an unceremonious and unexpected demise, us gamers have been jonesing for a college football game to fill that particular niche. With Immaculate Vision Gaming's Gridiron Champion still at least two years away from release, if it ever actually makes it to a release, Canuck Play has decided to step in and fill that college football gaming niche, at the request of their Twitter followers. To put Maximum Football 2019's Dynasty mode into perspective, I first have to talk about Maximum Football 2018. The lack of any kind of franchise, dynasty, or career mode in Maximum Football 2018 was, in my opinion, that game's biggest flaw. As the game lacked any kind of structured play or sense of long-term progression or achievement, there was a rudimentary season mode that consisted simply of a schedule of games followed by a playoff and a championship. All the games in the schedule were playable, you didn't select a specific team and guide it through the season, you just played whatever games tickled your fancy. There was no in-season roster management, no trading or free agents, and the mode ended after one season. Put simply, it was terrible. NFL Game Day 98 on the PlayStation 1 had a better season mode. Maximum Football 2019, on the other hand, has a new Dynasty mode that offers much of what last year's season mode lacked. It provides that structured play and sense of long-term achievement. This mode is heavily inspired by EA's NCAA Football 2013, almost to the point of plagiarism. If you liked NCAA Football 13 and are willing to put up with the lack of polish and production quality that is usually inherent to indie titles, then you will probably find some enjoyment in Maximum Football 2019's Dynasty. This Dynasty allows you to select or create a college team and build that team through as many as, I think, 50 seasons. There's a 25-team ranking system, conferences, and bowl games that all mimic the organization of the NCAA. Or you can play in a Canadian college football league, which has a, a different playoff structure. In fact, almost every team in Division I college football has a direct and obvious analog counterpart in Maximum Football 2019. I myself chose the Las Vegas Grizzlies and then rebranded them as the Pioneers. This time around, there is some team and roster management. This is a college game, so there isn't free agency or trades or anything like that. You get to redshirt players, which prevents them from playing in the current year, but gives them an additional year of eligibility so that they have that extra year to hopefully improve their ratings a little bit more in future seasons. Perhaps my favorite small detail in Maximum's Dynasty mode is the inclusion of full depth charts, including for special teams. 
Not only do you set your lineups on offense and defense, but you can also set up your own kickoff coverage and return lineups, which means that if you don't want to risk a starting linebacker or safety getting hurt on kickoff or punt coverage, you can assign underclassmen backups in those roles. This both protects your starters and veterans from injury and fatigue, while also giving reserve players a chance to contribute on special teams. This is something that I really wish every football game, including Madden, would include. It's a shame that Maximum's depth chart is really clumsy and awkward to navigate and use. It automatically sorts as you scroll to the side to look at player stats, and it doesn't lock the player's names and overall ratings on the left side. So it's exceedingly difficult to directly compare players when you're trying to figure out who you want to start in a given position. The net effect is that even though I love that the game gives me the ability to assign players as special teams gunners, doing so is really not worth the extra headache and hassle. Hopefully this is something that they can improve next year. The big selling point of this mode is, of course, the in-season recruiting. Just like NCAA Football 13, you add up to 35 prospects to your recruiting board and then spend hours every week of the season to call or text them in the hopes of convincing them to sign with your school for the following season. Almost all of the same recruiting pitches from NCAA Football 13 are recreated here with a couple of, I think, important omissions. There are no pitches for things like guaranteed playing time or for your personal play calling tendencies. Part of that has to do with the fact that every team has the same playbook, so there's not really any way of measuring your play calling tendencies other than the game literally tracking every single play that you run. But there aren't different schemes or anything like that, so even then there's only so much you can do. The result, however, is that if you like to play as a basement-dwelling school in your college football games, as I do, being that I'm an alum of UNLV, and my dad and I have had season home tickets for as long as I can remember, and you want to build that basement dweller up into a contender, then the omission of recruiting pitches like this is going to be a little bit of a problem. Lower tier schools simply have no bargaining chips that they can use to sway commits from joining the bigger, better schools. Even the proximity to home pitch failed miserably for me. You'd think that Las Vegas would have at least an average proximity rating for prospects in states like California, Arizona, Utah, and even Hawaii, given that Hawaiians consider Vegas to be the, quote, Ninth Island, unquote. But that is not the case. All the neighboring states were still listed as low for proximity to home, so I didn't even have the advantage of recruiting nearby students. And in fact, the first season in my Maximum Football 2019 Dynasty, the game didn't even generate any recruits in the state of Nevada, so pff, that pitch went out the window. This is an omission that came damn near close to killing Maximum Football's Dynasty mode on arrival for me. I did, however, keep playing and was still able to get some recruits. I would just call them up every week, soft sell two of the prospects' elite interest pitches, then hang up before they yell at me to leave them alone. The process was tedious, but it actually worked. In fact, it may have worked too well. I was able to sign most of the prospects that I recruited, except for, like, the highest tier ones. There was never really any sense of competition from the other schools, so I had no idea how I was doing compared to other schools that might have been recruiting these prospects. Uh, in fact, I had no idea if the other schools even were actively recruiting my prospects. Then suddenly, in week 10, a bunch of prospects on my recruiting board had an unknown interest level. At first, I panicked. I thought the game had bugged out and reset all my recruiting progress. Instead, what had happened is that a switch had suddenly flipped and all of the prospects were now committing to schools. Uh, apparently, a bunch of my recruits had committed to other schools, and the game had automatically removed them from my recruiting board and replaced them with a bunch of new prospects, all without my knowledge or permission. There was no screen telling me what schools those prospects had signed with, so short of memorizing each and every other player I was recruiting, I didn't know what players and at what positions I had lost. Going back and refilling that recruiting board was a bit of a pain. Also, I just want to point out, why the heck are DBs and receivers doing more bench press reps than the linemen and linebackers? What's going on here? So yeah, feedback in this mode is pretty abysmal, but it maybe even gets worse. 
In the following weeks, every player who was still uncommitted was suddenly willing to sign with basically the first team who talked to them. Each week, I refilled my recruiting board and signed each new recruit after a single soft pitch or two. I ended up with well over 60 commits. Six. Zero. Commits. By the start of the next season. And it wasn't just bottom of the barrel one and two star recruits either. There were plenty of three and four star recruits in there as well. I had basically recruited an entire team in the last five weeks of the season. I mean, to be perfectly fair, a lot of those players were garbage. They had overall ratings in the 50s and 40s. So I ended up cutting a lot of them, even though I don't think the game actually gives you a maximum roster size. So there's really no reason to cut players as opposed to just redshirting them. Whatever, I, I cut the players below 50 anyway, just to get the dead weight off my roster. All that time and effort that I had spent systematically and tediously calling prospects throughout the season kind of felt wasted, as I was able to get just as many prospects without any effort or long-term engagement at all. I was rather heartbroken when I got to this point in my first year of the Dynasty. I had been kind of enjoying the mode, but this flaw just completely killed my enjoyment and my desire to continue playing. I don't know if this is intended design by Canuck Play or if it's some kind of weird bug in the player recruitment logic. If it is intended design, then I think it's pretty terrible design, since it completely kicks the leg out of the dynasty mode and makes the mode feel kind of purposeless. If it's a bug, then it needs to be fixed ASAP, and I'll probably have to see if I have an archived save file from before the recruitment signing period so that I can maybe play the mode as it was intended to be played. In either case, Canuck is kind of on shaky ground with this Dynasty mode moving forward. The state of California recently passed a law prohibiting colleges from punishing student-athletes for receiving compensation for the use of their names and likenesses, and the NCA almost immediately was forced to relax its own rules regarding such compensation. With the legal and policy barriers rapidly crumbling, it seems inevitable that the NCAA will soon be willing to license its brand for sports video games again, and EA will almost certainly return to publishing its NCAA football series. An NCAA football 21 release in the fall of 2020 still seems to be overly optimistic at this point. The California law, after all, doesn't go into effect until 2023. I really hope we won't have to wait until 2023 to see an NCAA Football 24 release, but eh, I wouldn't hold my breath for a licensed game to release any earlier than that. If Canuck wants to compete with a big dog like EA, it's going to have to improve its product considerably, and it might also have to do more to try to differentiate its product from EA's big budget counterpart. Simply replicating NCAA Football 13 is not going to cut it if EA gets back into this game. Axis Football 2018 already had a functioning franchise mode, so that company's efforts instead went towards expanding that mode and making it deeper and more robust. Something that EA has not done with Madden's franchise mode to any significant degree in almost 10 years. Last year's Axis franchise mode featured a tiered league in which the champion of a lower tier would play the worst team in the next higher tier and would take that worst team's place if the lower tier, tier champion wins. It's similar to real life English soccer, and I think Backbreaker Football also had a similar tiered structure. It's an interesting departure from the conventional NFL League structure, and means that you can't just jump into a franchise and win it all in a single season. The sense of accomplishment is therefore drawn out over a longer period of time than Madden's franchise, because you always start in the bottom tier and have to spend at least a couple of seasons working your way up to that top tier. Because of this longer-term, tiered reward structure, the game has to put a greater emphasis on long-term team building and development, and this is where it shines compared to Maximum Football 2019. Last year's franchise mode included a salary cap, free agency, player trades, player progression and regression, contract renegotiations, injuries, and so forth. All the bare minimum for a franchise mode were checked off. There was even a practice squad, but it is sorely underdeveloped and borderline useless. All of those features, I'm proud to say, return for this year, and some have been improved. That practice squad that I mentioned uh, was sadly not any further developed for this year's game, but Axis Football 19's franchise mode is much deeper in many other respects. The highlight for this game is the ability to hire and fire a full coaching staff, not just a head coach, 
not just offensive, defensive, and special teams coordinator. You hire an entire 15-person coaching staff, including your coordinators, position coaches for quarterbacks, running backs, receivers, offensive line, defensive line, linebackers, and defensive backs, and also a set of four regional scouts. About the only things missing are a team doctor training staff, a strength and conditioning coach, and the cheerleading choreographer. Some coaches have special badges that boost the players that they coach, which provide some pretty tangible effects on the field. You can fire underperforming coaches, hire new ones, or promote coaches from within your staff, and so on. You also have to pay their salaries from your team's budget, which means maintaining a loaded roster of talented players and talented coaches is going to be a considerable challenge over the course of multiple seasons. You also set a practice schedule that you can change each week depending on your team's performance or the specific matchup with your opponent. Practicing too hard for too long will have negative effects on team morale, especially if the extra hard work does not translate into wins. Low morale will lower the performance of your players, degrade their yearly progression, and make them less willing to sign contract extensions. Unlike Maximum's in-season recruiting, this all seems to work in Axis football, as far as I can tell, and the interface is actually pretty good, and the UI is very crisp and responsive, at least on the PC platform that I played on. And there's a lot of very helpful screens. There's even a new draft guide that tells you the best players available to draft, and the best players available to fill weak positions on your team. A lot of very good stuff in this mode. Well, almost all of it works anyway. There's this one really nasty bug in Axis 19's franchise mode. Apparently, it does not tally my coach's win-loss record correctly. If I simulate the game, which I guess is what Axis must have been doing to test this functionality, it seems to count wins and losses correctly. But if I actually play the game, which is, you know, what you're supposed to be doing, it looks like the game is not adding my team's win or loss tally to the coaches. It's instead giving my coach credit for the worst team in the league's win or loss that week. So my top-rated nine-win team somehow has a coach with a winless record. I don't know if this is just a superficial bug or if it actually affects gameplay in any way. I don't know if coaches actually progress over years based on their performance. I don't know if this would affect player progression in any way, or coach contract negotiations, or coaches earning badges, or anything like that. But if this does affect in any way the on-field performance of your team, then this bug is inexcusably egregious. I don't know how this was not caught in their QA process. Especially since these new coaches is like the big new selling point of the franchise feature. Ugh. Just ugh. Worst of all, from what I've seen, Axis doesn't seem to do much in the way of post-release support for their games, especially compared to Canuck, which is releasing updates pretty much every month after the game comes out. So I actually have no confidence that this bug is going to get fixed in a patch by Axis anytime soon. I don't think this will get fixed in Axis 19 ever. We might have to wait until Axis 20 gets released and pay another $40 for it in order to get a fix for this, which again is just inexcusable. The four regional scouts are an interesting idea that I don't think pans out as well as the other features in this franchise mode. Each scout is assigned to one of four regions of the country, a West, Central, Northeast, and Southeast scout, and can only scout up to three position groups within their assigned region. And that's all cool. I like the strategy associated with deciding where to send your scouts and what position groups you want each scout to focus on. Unfortunately, each scout only gets three scouting points for the entire season. Because the game uses a draft similar to the NFL, you have very little control over your position in the draft, and thus have very little control over whether you'll be able to draft any sought-after players whom you've scouted. This isn't like the College Dynasty, where you actively recruit specific players over the course of several weeks of the season, and the more effort you put into it, the more work you put into it, the more resources you put into it, the more likely you are to actually get that player to commit to your school. No, this is a draft. It's a almost random crapshoot. At best, maybe you can rule out a player who was deemed a bust by your scouts. For each of those known busts, there's a hundred other players in the draft who you know virtually nothing about. Drafting, therefore, is such a crapshoot that I just don't feel like there's much of a payoff for all of my scouting efforts. 
In any case, this franchise mode is really deep. There's a lot of people on the internet who are saying that Axis 19 has a deeper franchise mode than Madden 20. Earn your way up. What's shocking to me is how this small team was able to make a deeper and more fleshed out franchise mode than Madden, while Madden pulls in hundreds of millions in revenue, has highly paid developers, and yet throws around the lack of resources excuse. Axis Football, with an incredibly small budget, has made a better franchise mode and hasn't used any lack of resources excuse, despite legitimately lacking resources. Something to I don't know if I'd go quite that far, at least not yet. Axis 19 is deeper than recent Madden games in some respects, but then again, Madden is still deeper than Axis in other respects. Axis certainly beats out Madden hands down with regard to the coaching staff and setting a practice schedule. But then again, Madden actually has a functioning practice squad, a preseason, a bare bones opponent scouting report, and weekly preparation that's actually playable. Others may disagree with me, but I also like Madden's player experience system, especially when it comes to training up younger players. I like the fact that they actually have to see game experience in order to improve. See my recent video about the Madden preseason for a more detailed description of why I like that particular part of the season in Madden. Though nobody seems to have watched that video, so so much for me trying to make positive videos. Even though I think that some reviewers are overhyping or overselling Axis by saying it's deeper than Madden, the fact that it's even comparable to a AAA game like Madden with its decades of experience and iteration is a testament to the quality of Axis Football 19's franchise mode, and also I think a scathing indictment of the lack of effort that EA has put into Madden's you franchise should. mode. So, yeah, Axis' franchise mode is really good, but you still need to temper your expectations a little bit. And he misses his mark. So, what can Canuck and Axis each learn from each other? Even though each game is filling very different niches for very different audiences, there are still, I think, a lot of lessons that they can take away from each other's games. For starters, both games, I think, should definitely refactor how their depth charts work, and look at each other's depth charts for inspiration. Canuck really needs to try to smooth out the operation of Maximum Football's depth chart to make it easier to read and just more user-friendly in general. Axis, on the other hand, should expand Axis Football's depth charts to include more of the formations and sets that Maximum includes, such as kickoff, punt, and field goal units that allow me to declare returners, coverage gunners, and a holder. I would also like to see both games tell me if a given player is already a starter at another position, and maybe they could also include a button to automatically remove any offensive and defensive starters from special team sets and replace those players with the best available reserve players. That way, I don't have to go through all the micromanagement myself. I would also like to see both games do a better job of delineating specific positions. Offensive linemen, for example, should have some attributes that specialize them as tackles, guards, or centers. Linebackers should be divided into inside and outside linebackers. Defensive linemen should be divided into tackles and ends. Defensive backs should be divided into corners and safeties, and so on. In addition to adding more pitches that favor lower tier schools and fixing all the other recruiting issues for Maximum Football 2020, Canuck Play could also benefit its Dynasty mode by adding some of the ideas from Axis's franchise mode and scouting system. Providing an option to invest in better training facilities or stadium upgrades or the campus itself in order to improve the respective pitch rankings would be a great improvement to Maximum's Dynasty recruiting system. The idea of hiring scouts and sending them out to different regions or states is also an idea that would probably work very well in Maximum's Dynasty mode. In fact, it's an idea that might even be better suited to a college dynasty mode than to Axis's professional franchise. Uh, bigger schools would have more scouts to cover more regions of the country, while smaller schools would probably have to focus their fewer scouts on a smaller set of pipeline states. Maybe you also hire recruits as well, so you scout the players to find out their ratings, then have regional recruits go out to make those initial pitches and gauge the prospect's interest in your school before your coach starts calling them directly. 
Maximum also doesn't have any kind of college coaching carousel, so its dynasty mode could probably also benefit from borrowing Axis's idea of hiring a coaching staff. They maybe don't have to go to the extent of having 15 coaching positions, but letting you hire at least a head coach and coordinators would be a welcome inclusion. Even so, the fact that this is a college game means that coaching is more important, because you're teaching the game to young amateurs instead of to experienced professionals. So maybe a full coaching staff is another idea that is better suited to a college dynasty than to a professional franchise mode. So, Canuck, I hope you're taking notes. I think the big takeaway from Maximum 19's Dynasty mode is that Axis should focus more of its effort on giving users active things to do during the week between games. That's, after all, one of the reasons that in-season in recruiting is such a popular feature, because it gives us something else to do besides just play the games on the field. The limited scouting points in Axis Football 19 means that there just isn't that much for you to do during the week between games of your Axis franchise mode, especially compared to the in-season scouting of Maximum. All your personnel decisions are mostly made before the season even starts. And, I mean, let's face it, you're unlikely to be adjusting your practice schedule every single week, or constantly realigning your depth chart, or making trades and free agent deals throughout the entire season. You maybe do a handful of those throughout the season and that's it. At the very least, I feel that each scout in Axis Football should probably recharge one scouting point each week so that we have something to do outside of the games. Or maybe our scouts should be able to spend points on scouting other teams' practice squads. That would also help to make the practice squad more relevant and strategic within the game. So yes, Maximum Football does have the Dynasty mode now, with the in-season recruiting, but I feel like that mode is still very rough around the edges and just did not hold up to extended play, at least not for me. Axis's franchise mode is a light year ahead of Maximum in 2019. Even though the on-field gameplay is not great, which we'll talk about in the next video, Axis at least provides a halfway decent and somewhat challenging management sim. In the next video, I'll be breaking down both games on field football action. I hope to see you again when that video goes up, hopefully in a couple weeks. Until then, keep on footballing. He steps back to pass. into the end zone.